The American holiday, celebrated on the fourth Thursday of November, is problematic at best and a celebration of genocide at worst. For the third year in a row, we are interrogating Thanksgiving. We're looking at how Americans talk and think about the holiday and the indigenous people who Thanksgiving by turns whitewashes or simply ignores. We're also thinking about ways we might make our own observance more aligned with our values. For the first time ever, we're releasing this episode early so that those who want to consider our thoughts as they prepare for their observance can do so. You're listening to the Joyous Justice Podcast, a weekly show hosted by April Baskin with Tracy Guy Decker. In a complex world in which systemic oppression conditions us to deny others and our own humanity, let's dedicate ourselves to the pursuit and embodiment of wholeness, love, and thriving in the world and in our own lives. It's time to heal and flourish our way to a more joyously just future. Hi, Tracy. Hey there, April. Hi, friend listening in. So uh, I often do a long intro, but I want to keep this one short today and turn it over to Tracy to do a little bit of storytelling uh, in just a moment. But um, for those who are tuning in on Grateful Family Day, also known as slash the holiday, formally, but still also federally known as Thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, so that's happening if you're listening in or it will have been perhaps proximate if you listen in soon and feel free. We'll include it in the show notes. We've really um, dug in deep around a variety of themes with this holiday. So much so that I think Tracy and I feel, um, um, or at least I do. And I think, but I think Tracy aligns with it to a sense of peacefulness around the clarity I feel in my analysis about what this holiday means and what it can mean for different folks. And so I'm excited to see in light of the work that Tracy and I have continued to do where this conversation will take us. And as I mentioned earlier, I'd love for us to start by grounding in a really wonderful story that Tracy started to tell me. And then I painfully interrupted her and said, let's actually just record this because I think this is worth capturing in its raw and beautiful form. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you, April. Um, yeah. So as I I was starting to tell you, and now I'm going to tell our listeners, um, right now I'm, I, uh, carpool with another family in the neighborhood. And, um, one of the kids in the carpool is a freshman in, in high school and I pick him up first. And then I go pick up my daughter and the, uh, the elementary age sister. And so I always have about 10 minutes, just me and this, um, 14 year old, um, in the car. And just yesterday he was telling me, um, well, a week ago now for the listeners, um, he was telling me that his social studies teacher is having the class work on in teams, designing, uh, potentially new monuments that could go at the site of wounded knee to Mm. honor and commemorate the members of the Sioux nation who lost their lives at wounded knee. Um, he was telling me that right now, all that exists is like a, like a small kind of tombstone type stone marker. Um, and, and so the, the social studies it's teacher is not sufficient. Yes. Um, that's, that was the message that these students were given and were invited to really think about what, what would that, what would a, a more appropriate marker and memorial look like? And so, so he was telling me about this project and I said, wow, that's really great, um, thing for you all to be thinking about, especially in this run up to Thanksgiving, which kicked off this conversation with me and this, um, 14 year old about Thanksgiving. So he said, yeah, my teacher doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving because of what it represents. And it, I don't know, it really makes me sort of sad that, that Thanksgiving now has this reputation. And I was like, yeah, well, it's kind of sad that we built a national holiday on the back of genocide. And he was like, yeah, I feel bad. I kind of like Thanksgiving and this student, he's, um, he actually is a, a, a baker and like, like sells his baked goods at farmer's markets and stuff, has his own business. And he's like, mm. I love baking pumpkin pie and I make hand pies. And I don't know, should I, maybe I shouldn't be doing that. And I was like, well, this is really an interesting question. Like, 
how are there ways that we can hold on to what's good about Thanksgiving and not erase the things that are bad? Like, how can we, like, I, I actually posed it as a question to him. Like, it's not a bad thing to eat good food with your family and be grateful. That's not a bad thing. So yeah. what are ways that we can like introduce new things that would allow us to keep the good without just ignoring or erasing the bad? And we, we talked about changing the date and making the third, yeah, yeah, yeah. what, whatever it is, the fourth Thursday in November, actually some sort of day of mourning or um, some, some way to, which I think the um, Native Americans already um, mm-hmm. uh, treat that day as a day of mourning. Um, and, and I said, you know, I think maybe we should just do it in like February or something, you know, and, and my young friend was like, no, I think it needs to be in November, just not that day. So we had this whole conversation <laughs> about what that might look like. Um, I was telling him what I know, which is not that much about the peoples who lived where we live. Um, and I think, so we live in Baltimore, um, and the, the peoples who were here were the Piscataway and the Susquehannock. And for my limited research, I don't think that there are any who claim Susquehannock who are still living, um, who claim Susquehannock ancestry, but the Piscataway, uh, tribe and nation is still very much mm. active um, and alive. Ooh, and can so, we just pause for a second? Yeah. Yeah. It, and just like, ooh. and I know right? and I, this is, but I just want to, and it's easy for me to just the person who's not talking just for a moment, just to acknowledge one. I want, I want to just, my first question is there's probably some descendants. Uh, yes. One I, and two, it's also possible because the genocide was that horrific that actually maybe there are none, right? And three, either one of those scenarios is just, so we're not going to, we're not going to, I'm going to like emotion level three or four of this of 10, Mm -hmm. right? Like, like I'm not going to allow us to fully go there because we need to finish this episode. And, but in the context of other healing work I do, I just want to honor that that is like a, especially as members of, for me, multiple peoples. And for both of us, uh, um, as Jews, as people, um, as a member of a people who have also been targeted for annihilation. And I just want to name really explicitly here, just really go meta and also say, like, I have friends and my fellow healing leaders and in different spaces pause me. So I don't want to make this a, a dichotomy, even in this moment of like, Tracy's the numb person. Like we're in storytelling and I just want to notice like the, and just have us all take a moment to honor the devastation. That's just like the norm. And that, and it's not, and it's still not even the norm for Tracy just to name it, like just explicitly naming that and acknowledging it as countercultural and what I would say is just bookmark this as I do at times and ways in my life of when you're in a healing space later on, or when you have time and space, if it makes sense, um, you might want to flag this as something to come back to and just um, process the feelings that arise. Now that I've concluded that interlude, both feel free to respond to that Tracy or pick back up where you left off. It's just like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just I, like I, crying invisible tears in this moment. Like my chest I, feels heavy. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually, I do want to respond oh. to that. Cause that, that is exact when I, so I did some research on the people whose land I now live on, um, for, I think it was actually spurred by grateful friend, family day last year or maybe the year before. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But one mm-hmm. of the times when we, when we had a conversation where I committed to listeners that I would look up on whose land I now live. And I did. Um, and if no doubt there are people alive who have Susquehannock, uh, ancestry, um, ancestry, and there is no organized body. Sovereign. Got it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do a mini for just a couple seconds, just like a mini crying. (laughs) Sorry, please continue. That's just really, yeah, it's really, really heavy. And it, I'm smiling to not fully follow to not in this moment, because we're recording a podcast, but like, oh, sorry, go ahead. It's really, um, 
realizing that and then, you know, sharing that with my young friend, realizing it a year or two ago and, and sharing it. And I still, I actually choose if, if I'm in a space where folks are doing land acknowledgement, I always name the Susquehannock rather than the Piscataway. And I'm going to actually interrogate that a little bit after we, um, break mm. for, but that yeah. has been a thing. And I think it's in part for, you know, what you're reacting to, because part of my learning edge, um, around, um, around native oppression is, and I was to I, well, up to up your ante a little bit. It's also really great to, and I've been practicing more lately in the last six months saying indigenous, but thank please you. continue. Yeah. Um, so, but, but part of my learning edge around the oppression of native and indigenous folks, especially here, here on in North America mm-hmm. is that I was, I've had internalized the idea that they don't exist anymore. Right. I had totally internalized yeah. that idea. And so that like, cause it's been so heavily perpetuated by our culture and society. Yeah. It's, yeah, not, it's yeah. not like you thought of that. No, no, yeah. I don't, I'm not beating myself up for that. I, no, I, I know, but I wanted message. to say that for others who are listening, just to be really clear that that's part of the programming that many yeah. of us receive. And that's why my going, my coming homework was so difficult because I had to counter that about my own heritage within myself. Yeah. So please, con- sorry, continue. Yeah. So working to really undo that programming in myself and, you know, and stop perpetuating the erasure of, um, indigenous peoples is, is Mm -hmm. one of my learning edges. Right. And, um, and so to do the research on the people on whose land I live and realize that there is no, at least no organized body of that nation any longer. It was, it was really, um, I'm not even sure how to articulate it because it's, it's sort of the deep sadness that, that sure. I'm, I'm sensing in you, but there's also this sense of like, like I'm too late. Like my growing awareness is, um, is, is too late, which I think is, is now that I'm saying that is part of why I lift, lift up that, their name, that nation's name. When I name whose land I live on. Anyway, I feel like I've been talking a lot. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, but I love it, and and I've often talked talked a lot during these episodes and in general, which I think is wonderful in a number of ways. But I I loved having your voice in this and your partnership. So thank you. Um, it felt purposeful and helpful um, in the context of our partnership and uh, for our beloved kindred spirits listening in. Um, you know what I would add to that or say is that I really appreciate you naming that thought. And I'm really excited to continue to dive more deeply into in general in our work, through our coaching, through the different ways we help our clients to support, to facilitate a safe enough container where people feel comfortable sharing these thoughts because these thoughts heavily impact how we feel about our, excuse me, um, heavily impact how we feel about ourselves, how we lead our lives, the way we perceive different things. And, um, and they didn't come from nowhere, but then we internalize them and they just stay in us rather than being able to take them out and look at them. And, you know, as I'm looking at what you just shared and just one honoring it, Shamati, first and foremost, I hear you, um, in that share. And I also want to say, if I may, may I respond to it a little bit? Of course. Yeah. Is that I want to say, I think that there's absolutely some truth to that. And also, as you know, like the work isn't done and not all is lost. Um, uh, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm not going to go on that path that I'm just thinking about parallel narratives around the Shoah and, and other moments of, um, genocide and attempted genocide where, there's still so much healing and justice and truth and reconciliation that is possible that can heal and support and honor our ancestors and ourselves ar- around this. Um, and I just, I just love that you shared, shared that and, 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 and in so doing invited all of us to also think about what are other really hefty thoughts and perceptions that 
maybe totally bogus, or in your case might act like there actually may be some truth in it, but if nothing else, it's good to not hold it alone. And also perhaps to have other compassionate folks listen in and where and when appropriate also say, and also here's this other perspective that likely we're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, we do know that. And can start to meld that additional idea that helps us return to our sense of um, humble, but empowered agency around hefty, devastating collective and individual trauma. Um, so thank you, Tracy. Again, Shamati, thank you. All that to say, I love, I loved this story so much. And it feels like just such a beautiful progression of the conversation that we've been having. I also want to reflect back that I love that you were having it with a young person and um, there's, there's something about it that is just so hopeful and feels really great. And like, and the work is so not done and yet it still feels so fantastic to hear. I, Cause I'm guessing that actually like as amazing as you are and he is, but actually I think on some subtle level helps me feel like y'all aren't the only ones who are having conversations like this. And it, right. it just, no, I, I I definitely, really good. I definitely took that hope out of it too. And I think about, I mean, when I think about what I was learning as a freshman in high school, compared to some of the stories that, you know, I'm hearing, even in my like, like even this teacher, minutes, like shout out to this teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like really, really amazing. We, we recently had a conversation about um, the student and I had a re conversation about reconstruction after the civil war that I was like, wow, I am so excited that you're learning about it. They, they were on some sort of team to talk about why reconstruction failed. And I was like, yeah. And was the answer racism? He was like, well, yeah, I was on the team that argued white supremacy was the reason that reconstruction failed. And I was like, oh, 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 let's have this conversation. <laughs> so let's do you know, this. <laughs> yeah. So, and I think about the way I learned about reconstruction right. as a freshman in high school, it was- And mm -mm, me we, 10 years later. Yeah. Yeah. We did not talk about white supremacy. <laughs> And I remember thinking at times, or even when I've talked about it with certain folks, like, you know, different, different things and, you know, or even about the civil war, like, or, you know, it wasn't, or, you know, when people are like, you know, slavery wasn't, enslavement wasn't the yeah. reason. And I was like, it's right. Yeah. But, but between like the power dynamics and the money and the sheer number of like million, uh, really like this doesn't fit, you know, it's going back to that piece about earlier about it, how it's interesting. And I want to just flip the script on that about, um, intuitive sensing and presence and intuition and how that scene is bizarre, but yet like twisted, like here's the data. You know, I was watching an Amanda Seals video video earlier about a different scenario. And she was like, you know, we're, like, I don't even trust this guy to like with him. I don't trust him with two plus two. Like he might be like, well, you know, it depends. Sometimes it can be seven. Like, this is what that feels like. <laughs> like I'm engaging with my ancestors and also just doing logical, intuitive work around noticing different narratives and noticing how it's playing out in my own life. And that scene is bizarre, but like not saying the very obvious reason why something popped off. And that's the only, I'm not saying it's the, I, I can hear different people I know in my orbit who are, you know, who have had previous conversations with, although hopefully they've since changed their tune. Anyway, I want to switch gears a little bit. And say just again, shout out to this teacher and shout out to all the teachers who are helping to broaden and deepen the narrative, who are weaving critical race theory and just accurate sociological analysis at the level that's appropriate for high schoolers. Like, it's so funny when, you know, that like critical race theory is something that I learned in my undergrad, you know, when reviewing a lot of graduate study, graduate level mm -hmm content and my high school education prepared me for this in different ways, but it wasn't, it was just, and it was mostly for my family. It wasn't necessarily my teachers did it, but I would find things. And at times like with the, with the civil war thing, I didn't, I was just like, huh. And I got a lot of bad grades for it in a number of years throughout my childhood. Cause I wrote about like native folks and I wrote narratives that didn't fit the common narrative. Um, and the point at which I got honor roll in high school I mean, excuse me, in college was when I decided, you know what? I know what I know, but this is a game. So I'm just going to say what this professor wants. And I know the essay in my head and, my, and I have my whole life to build it out. And all of a sudden, <laughs> like 
which was slightly dis- disturbing. But I was like, oh, I get, oh, I get this now. I can ha- hold me and my perspective and do that work. But in this specific context, I need to conform. Unlike with with the exception of a few liberatory teachers, so I'm so happy to hear uh, and just shout out to all of those different civic and otherwise educators who are doing really brave work with our young people and equipping them to just take this so much farther and deeper in partnership. And I'm not, and I don't like, I like in some ways I liked it as a kid, but even early on I didn't fully have it. I don't really like the narrative of like the children are our future. Like we are all our future. And our children are people now. So let's respect them now in ways that are appropriate, like have boundaries for young people, but also like, let's also counteract children's oppression and let's not defer or offload our civic duty onto those young people. And let's all work together in different ways. We have aligned and different things to bring. All of this to say, I feel like this is a pretty nice juicy episode. And I think I'd like to spend another few minutes though, to round us out and circle back to some of the other pieces you talked about and just say um, that what I noticed or felt or experienced or wanted all of those things in what you shared is to, for us to display on the joyous justice podcast, um, a nice, lovely continuum that we are offering up of a variety of different ways to engage with the different questions and challenges and wildly problematic dynamics around Thanksgiving, Grateful Family Day, however we want to call it. And and it's important um, for us to engage in these conversations, which we, for those who have listened before, we also have new listeners. So I'm both trying to catch, you know, catch folks up a little bit and also um, continue the conversation with the folks who have been in this with us for a while now that I just want to name here um, and contradict the ever present uh, oppressive dynamic of, of optics or uh, what's what, like performative expectations, like just to contradict that and say that there are a variety of different ways to engage this holiday. It's going to be interesting. I don't know if I'm even going to raise it with my family member with whom I've struggled with this holiday. I think I am more clear within myself. I have a bit more personal sovereignty around this. And I feel clear at this point in time that I think I would personally love to dedicate a decent amount of time on uh, the Indigenous National Day of Mourning to either engage in mourning and or take time to think about how I want to deepen and continue my coming homework, my indigenous coming homework, um, and or revisit the ways that I am in solidarity with my indigenous siblings and elders. And if there are ways that I can deepen that. I think I am in the camp of, I would just like to find a different day. I really would because there's so much momentum and different things. And I, but I really like, I really like um, your young friend's point about, but there is something about it being in the fall because fall foods are great and they're also African and indigenous and Southern. So like, I also like that for me and, and like for my, for my ancestry and for many people and there's comfort in that it's getting cold and there's a way to come together. And I actually think it could be a really interesting truth and reconciliation, part of a broader truth and reconciliation process that either it happens or this helps to move us in the direction of that happening to actually have them not be so far apart and perhaps to have this new rescripting precede which means all kinds of interesting things for us with our work calendars for different people and scheduling, but that's okay. We can do this for the purposes of collective liberation of having um, a grateful, appreciative, whatever we, we want to use growing family day. Oh, I like growing, you know, we, we had our uh, grounded and growing program. And I like this idea of our family trees continuing to grow and blossom and, um, evolve over time and that there can be an illness in the tree, but that it can heal that and address it and continue to grow and grow new branches and grow new possibilities. Um, even if there was previously harm, um, 
Yeah. It seems like you're like leaning in Tracy. And so I was, I was like in my hyper focus <laughs> neuro spicy zone, but, um, uh, I'm, I'm wanting to hear. The thing that's coming up for me right now is, um, the, the way that capitalism has also sort of co-opted um, right. <laughs> this day. Like, so it's, so now it's a day that we sort of low key commemorate genocide and by spending money on things we don't need. Um, and so, <laughs> and I recently, I follow the, um, Piscataway, uh, Conway tribe, uh, they're, so they're the, the yeah, you do. contemporary descendants. I follow them on, on socials and, um, they have a fund where, that they use to help members become homeowners. Um, and so I was just thinking that I am going to actually, instead of, um, spending money on things that we don't need, I'm going to spend money, um, to, to that fund to help the, folks, um, the contemporary descendants of the peoples who, on whose land I live <laughs> to, uh, to actually become homeowners and, and access the means to generational wealth that this country has set up. That, that's, that's what I was thinking about. Full body chills. I love, oh, I love that so much. Yes. I love the equity in that. I love the honoring indigenous sovereignty and, um, which is not new for you. I'm just, I'm just highlighting these, these things for those who are tuning in, you know, and honoring the requests that are, that some of the requests that were made by, um, folks who are indigenous to the land upon which you live. And then that also ties into the, uh, the last piece that I wanted to name, which we haven't spoken yet, which we haven't spoken about yet on this podcast, but I'm excited to, um, perhaps continue this moving forward and this to, this to be a launch pad, perfect day for it, um, is, around the themes of land back, which I feel like what you're contributing to is a part of that. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be great for us to at time engage in conversation around the land back movement um, and what it means and the different things that it means to different people, to different indigenous people and allies, and that it's not necessarily about, um, yeah, that it's just about supporting indigenous sovereignty and um, shifting continuing our progress from acknowledgement into greater accountable relationship and reorientation to the land and the indigenous and, and the land and its original inhabitants. And in many cases, but not always tragically, um, it's contemporary stewards who often get drowned out because of oppressive systems and dynamics, but who are still here and who are still guiding and stewarding this work in a variety of different ways and along with allies who are and other folks for perhaps who are like me, where I would place myself in a rung outside of that as an indigenous heritage person who is less directly impacted by it as a person with mixed heritage identity, but also is deeply committed to this work, to picking up the liberation, the liberatory fight of my ancestors with conviction, with clarity, with strength, and with deep humility and positional awareness about where I fit into this conversation, which is very much a part of it, as someone who is Indigenous, with Indigenous heritage, um, and as someone who did not grow up on a reservation, and who, because of my appearance in different ways, isn't as directly impacted as other Indigenous heritage people are. Um, and, and I think... For, that is a very specific thing to me. And I also hope in hearing what I'm sharing that you, our friend, can also get some inspirational insight around uh, having me model the nuances of what that looks like for me as someone with Indigenous heritage and also with what Tracy shared of noticing within this and all these different things we shared to one, you might also be, you might be one of the folks and shout out if you are, because I know we have some listeners and dear friends. Hi, Amelia. Um, and other folks who uh, are deep in a uh, deep accountable relationship with indigenous people um, locally in their area and also across the nation at times. Um, also Rabbi Lynn Gottlieb and um, uh, Jews on Ohlone land. Anyway, so I wanted to shout out some of our people, both who are listeners and also who are um, allies and collaborators in the work we do and in the, Jew in the Jewish community who are doing some of this work. Um, and 
anyway, that as you are listening, friend, we want to invite you um, to really savor and enjoy what is beautiful. Like, because there's a lot of ugliness. <laughs> around this day. And if you're listening on this day or even afterward in the moment and or afterward to savor one of this and start to have a little bit of a division around, okay, some of this context isn't okay. And that doesn't necessarily have to infiltrate the love that we share here and begin to consider these different questions around, and it doesn't have to be in a particular order. You know, you might be like, huh, either I've already been tracking, or I think I want to look up and see who are the indigenous nations that are proximate to me and what are the different ways they are asking for solidarity and support? And can I do that? Right. And even just asking those questions and looking it up, taking action is another stuff You know that, that this is all to me. There's so much around this issue and other issues that is framed in a, in black or white. And a lot of this is, is totally nonlinear and just around noticing where we are with it and honoring ourselves um, and anchoring in the truth of our experience and approaching these different questions and engaging with them and letting it filter through our being and noticing what comes up. And as different things come up, as per usual, always feel free to reach out to us. We have a Facebook group, if you haven't already joined, that we're going to be increasingly upping um, and supporting participation in uh, the Joyous Justice community on Facebook. And, or uh, if you have our email or, or our, con our website, we have a contact page where if you wanted to follow up with us about how you're thinking about this or questions that arose for you, please feel free to do that. We are happy to be in dialogue and support you with this. And also if you're just busy and you're just tuning in as you're, putting your vegan or not vegan turkey in the oven or doing whatever you're doing or cleaning up or reflecting on this a few days later, um, know that we're with you as you continue to contemplate this and think about what truth and reconciliation, what gratitude and appreciation and love of family looks like as we also continue to move in the direction of acknowledgement um, and support of indigenous um, experience, narrative, identity, sovereignty, and the land back movement and wherever you are along that spectrum. Um, so Tracy, do you want to send us out with any holiday related farewells mm. or other insights that you often wonderfully share? Yes, I'll just note um, that we will put in the show notes a uh, link where you can look up um, on a map uh, the the names of the peoples um, on whose land you are occup um, occupying or hanging out. I will be in Milwaukee with my sister, so I'm going to actually do some research on those peoples um, to add to my body of knowledge of indigenous uh, North Americans. Okay. And also too, with the invitation, I wanted to add an additional invitation because we have some amazing leaders and folks in our network. If either you want to, if there's a related conversation, not necessarily directly relating to Thanksgiving, but also, or Grateful Family Day, but also just Indigenous sovereignty, um, questions about my experience or issues that are happening that you'd love us to amplify on the podcast, please feel free to be in touch. And if you're a friend of ours or a new friend of ours, and um, there's a specific opportunity where we could potentially be in conversation together on the podcast, um, our door is open and this is an ongoing dialogue and this is just the next step in that. And we'd love for you to be a part of it, either spiritually and or pragmatically our door is open. So um, much love. May we continue to access healing, connection, and vision and appreciation for both where we're going and the amazing abolitionist, courageous leaders who have always been on Turtle Island and who have always been in the United States. It's an opportunity and time for us to nourish ourselves and rise because we've got a lot of joy and justice to advance. Much love. Thanks for tuning in. To learn more about Joyous Justice LLC, our team, and how you can get involved with our community, check out the info in our show notes 
or find us at joyousjustice.com. If you enjoyed this episode, show us some love. Subscribe wherever you're listening. Tell your people, share what you're learning and how your leadership is evolving. Stay humble, but not too humble. And keep going. Because the future is ours to co-create.